Welcome to the most important part of my Unitail crash course. This time, it's about fixing Lua errors. I'm only going to show you how to fix a couple of errors, though. The focus is going to be on how you can help yourself. Why? There's a saying, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. What this means is that showing you the solution to an error might help you now, but teaching you how to fix errors by yourself will help you in the future. That's why this video will be more of a guide than a step-by-step -step tutorial. With all that said, let's go! Firstly, I'm going to show you some of the most common errors, starting with the infamous end expected near EOF. EOF stands for end of file, so this just means that you're missing at least one end somewhere. Another version of that error is EOF expected near end. This is the opposite, you have too many ends somewhere. Each if else block, function and loop needs to end with an end. Make sure they all have one or you will never see the end of it. Haha, <laughs> clever. I'll show you a trick how you can more easily avoid this error later on. Then there's also the attempt to do something with a nil value error. This just means that you tried doing something with a variable that doesn't exist. Like trying to access a table that doesn't exist, resulting in the attempt to index a nil value error. Often, this error is just the result of a minor spelling mistake and can be fixed quite easily. However, unlike with the end error, there is no magical fix that will work in every situation. This applies to almost all errors, which is another reason why this video isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial. Lastly, there are errors that look mean, like engine errors. This looks scary, but the only relevant information is at the top. It should be pretty clear what could not find file means. The file simply isn't there. So don't be intimidated. Take it easy and you'll figure stuff out. I could cover other errors, but this would get boring. So let's move on to some helpful tips and tricks. Of course, each problem and error is different, but some things always apply. Most importantly, try to help yourself first before asking for help. You'll gain experience solving issues and can grow as a programmer. Here's a short list of what you can do in case of an error emergency. Simply try stuff out. Errors usually point to a specific line. The error will often be there or one line above. Look closely at the lines to see where the error might be and change stuff. If you've made a typo, which is a common mistake, you might spot it right away. If you can't find the solution just by looking, there are plenty of resources available. There's the CYF documentation that comes bundled with the engine. If someone tells you to RTFD, they mean read the, uh, frickin' documentation. I've had people tell me that the documentation is scary, but it literally has a page called How to Read This Documentation. So there's no excuse not to look at it for guidance. It's useful even when you don't have errors. Otherwise, there's always Google. It might sound weird, but many people just don't know how to Google. It's actually quite simple. Just copy the error you're getting into the search bar and add Lua behind it. Then press enter, that's the key that says enter, and voila! You'll get thousands or even millions of results in a few milliseconds. Usually the first few links can provide you with a good enough answer if you just read. With issues that aren't related to errors, you're gonna have to put them into words, but that's not rocket science either. You'll get better the more you Google, so start now. Last but not least, there's also an official Reddit wiki for troubleshooting errors. I've included a link to it in the description. You'll learn some useful things there, so go ahead and read it. If you've tried all of the above and still haven't found a solution, it's time to ask for help. Let's have a little quiz. Where should you go to get help? Ha! You wish. No, my comment section isn't a good place to ask for help. In fact, it's a terrible place for it. Not only could you annoy me, but it's also an ineffective way to communicate. The correct place to ask for help is, surprise, surprise, the Unitail Discord. They have two dedicated modding help channels there, so make use of them. When asking for help, keep a few things in mind. Make sure to describe your problem as clearly as possible. Post a screenshot of your error if you can. 
Always include the entire code file which is related to the issue you're having. There are two ways to do this. Either paste it into Discord directly and wrap it with a code block like this. The better option is to use Pastebin. It's free and works without an account. Any other way is not acceptable by my standards. Not only will your code be difficult to read, but you'll run into other issues. Like with asterisks, the little stars, being recognized as the start of italic text and disappearing from your code. Oh, and don't even dare to post a blurry picture of your code. Just don't. Aside from all that, be patient with the people who are trying to help you. They may ask follow-up questions or take a while to understand your code, and that's perfectly fine. Being rude or impatient helps nobody, including yourself. While we're on the topic of understanding someone else's code, here are a few simple things you can do to make your code cleaner. This helps everyone understand your code better, including yourself, once again. There's nothing worse than coming back to a project of yours only to wonder what the heck your own code does. Not that I could speak from experience or anything. <coughs> One very helpful tool are comments. They can clarify what your code does, even to a total noob. Write them to be as descriptive and concise as possible. Nothing like this, please. Sometimes the code is clean enough that it doesn't need a comment, so only use them when necessary. Another useful step is to give your variables descriptive names. Each snippet of code becomes much easier to read if your variables are clearly named. See if you can't figure out what this piece of code does. Now let's rename the variables. You can immediately see from the variable names alone that the code has something to do with moving bullets. Another small but very noticeable improvement is proper indentation. A lack of indentation can easily obfuscate your code. Since so many people have errors where they have the wrong amount of ends, proper indentation of if statements can help you spot these errors much more easily. Here's a rundown of how indentation works. Whenever you start a new function, if statement or loop, the next line will be offset to the right by a bit. You decide how much indentation you want. I usually use one tab because using spaces is for scrubs. After every end, the next lines are slightly less offset. Not only does this look neat, but it can also help you catch errors. If you still have indentation at the end of your file, you might have skipped an end somewhere, which would lead to the famous error. So cool. There's much more to clean code than just that, but those are the easy things that anyone can do. Any more than that would be too much for a beginner video. Let's move on to something unprecedented. In all videos, I have told you things. Now let's reverse the situation. You get to tell me something. I will show you a snippet of code which causes an error and you will tell me how to fix it. You may pause the video and think for a second. You may even use Google or the documentation to find a fix. Then I will reveal my solution. Got it? Okay, let's go. We are starting off with our beloved end error. Here's the code. Can you spot the problem? An end is missing after the else block. You can tell by the weird indentation. Here's what proper indentation looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Next up, this error only shows its ugly visage when we select an item. Can you tell what's wrong? If you can't, look up what the functions do in the documentation. You'll find them on the page called the inventory object. Give it a try. And here we have the culprit. This one is supposed to be a zero. Whenever we select an item, the index that's being calculated is just slightly outside the valid index range. That one was a bit tricky, I'll admit. Let's see if we can guess the next one. Once again, this error doesn't show itself immediately, only when the enemy is supposed to start its dialog. What could possibly be wrong? Once again, the documentation is your friend. This time, look for the audio object. This one is easy if you've watched the last part. There simply is no start function. The proper way to start the audio again is with play. Congratulations, you have finished the quiz. Combining our newfound error fixing powers with our ability to Google basically makes us unstoppable. And if something does manage to stop us, we can ask others for help. I hope those tips were useful to you in some way.
In return, I just ask you to stop spamming my comment section with errors. Not that you need to do that anymore, right? Anyways, that's it from me. Time to not upload anything for another six months. See ya then, and creator out!